So today we're going to be talking about Alport and his difference in opinions and difference in theories than someone who has a more psychodynamic background, such as C. Freud. So with psychodynamics, they focus more on the idea of a past having an effect on the future. So the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind is going to be where the mental state is going to have it. Oh, shit. Where the mental state is going to have um, full and almost complete um, reliance on the past, past experiences, the nature versus nurture discussion. So nature versus nurture is going to be where some will believe that the nurture or environment is going to be where all of our future, present decisions are going to be um, relied upon. So you're going to say you want to, you're more of a fan of, you're more of a fan of punk music, for, for example. The reason why is potentially because you have an unconscious bias towards other music because you, because in the past you may have had a situation where Christianity, Christian music was, was um, placed onto you. So that's where the unconscious bias or the unconscious is going to have an effect on the person. And that's what Sieg Freud and many of his followers put forth, the idea of the unconscious and the focus of it. Alport, however, in his brief meeting with Sieg Freud, he actually had um, a, what he called a negative experience, a negative experience with um, Freud where Freud automatically assumed that Alport's drives and um, goals were more so the de um, a deviation from just his sim just simply his unconscious thought. So the idea of categorized psychology more so repulsed him. He he felt more of the idea that situations, instances, the now, the idea of now having a, a more effect on it, anything than any of the, any past experiences. So the idea of him having a phantom or a projecting thought on upon the child that he saw, because um, when he met Siegfried, he actually um, talked about how there was a child who was in um, who was in need of a clean environment. See, Freud automatically um, had assumed that the child was actually Alport. Alport was actually projecting his past potential traumas onto that child. That was not the case, according to Alport. So Alport went and in his um, in his studies and research, he went on to focus on his goals, his um, his theories. His theory was was quite different. His theory of personality actually provided a idea of focus of something that was more new within the psychological realm, the conscious, the conscious realm. So the conscious realm is going to be where you, your, um, your, th um, the past instances in your life are going to have no, absolutely no, um, impact on your future and present. So that is where. Alport and Freud definitely have differences because Freud definitely focuses on the uh, the unconscious mind, dreams, um, nature versus nurture. Um, definitely the father of um, 
all of the unconscious um, theories and um, theologies that were developed during these times and are still used today. So Alport, um, with his, he had um, different traits that he had developed, different traits that he, that he um, truly discovered and saw patterns that were um, that were consistent with his research. So one of the things that he did was he came up with a chart, not only a chart, but um, stages, stages, concepts that truly deviated from Freud it was the idea of traits overlapping. So traits overlapping is similar. So say I personally like football, but I also have a very neat sense to myself. So when I have my friends over, we're all going to be watching a football game. The football game, while we're watching, I'm going to be consistently checking on the room, making sure everything's clean, making sure everything's neat, and I'll and I'll miss the majority of the of the um, actual game. That would be the idea of two trades overlapping. That would be a definite deviation from Sieg Freud, who would believe that who would have um, who would believe that I would be doing that solely because. Um, because of a past trauma or experience, say with a parent or guardian who emphasized cleanliness. Alport and Freud definitely had less in common than they did in common. So with Cattell, he also had a more conscious focus on psychology. So they both have an idea of traits and um, them also having a more so a hierarchy idea, like a more um, like needs having a certain um, a certain level to each one. So cardinal traits, you, th that would be um, something that's very um, cardinal traits being the traits were more so placed upon a very um, a very rare amount of people so cardinal traits would be um, considered something that would um, not develop but um, consume the entire personality so development developmental and all of that would be definitely um, not in the frame of mind that Alport had so Alport definitely believed in the, um, that now um, now in the present having influence the environment the current environment and stimuli having a, a um, having a more of an impact than any past or, or um, former experience so with cardinal traits not everyone has them not everyone has a cardinal trait is what Alport um, proposed Alport proposed that cardinal traits were some um, so for example for a cardinal trait would be, sadism or someone who's, who hyperfixates, someone who hyperfixates on a certain thing. Hyperfixation, hi hyperfixation would be um, someone like, like for the instance of, uh, for some instance of someone who would always, who would always make sure that, um, Everything, always, everything they um they do always ends in a six, or someone who would believe that, or uh, someone who I also did um a research on, who um believed that they um they could actually become one with a cartoon character that develop that consumed their entire personality they they wanted they spent their entire life trying to become this cartoon character that they saw on tv now that would be considered um an influence a environmental 
stimuli that that person was consuming that also consumed himself. Now, he also had personal deviations. Personal deviations are something that anyone can have. So I like, I like punk rock. I like, I like anime. I like watching. I like reading books. So those are going to be personal traits that are going to only, um, not only be um, strictly for certain individuals. It would be that anyone could have. And that would be what what would deviate you from others that um, within traits. Now, the idea of overlapping is um, a new concept that would that, as I mentioned before, would also come into play with decision making. Now, with his others, um, he also had two others, secondary traits which would be something that only someone close to you would notice something like oh that person that person tends to bite their nail something like that and then there would also be central something that would be like five or maybe five or ten traits that um that would correlate so with Cattell he also believed in consciousness but he also believed that the past did have a um, did have a potential effect on the present. That is where he deviates from Alport. So Alport also, I mean, so Cattell also believed in um, the conscious, but he, with his traits, he also believed that certain um, certain traits were more categorical, categorical similar to Freud. So he had more of a categorical um, sense of the, of the um, psychology, such as, as common traits, um, common traits, temperament traits. And so these two, um, with, with common traits, they are more, they're almost identical to the personal disposition. So it's going to be your um, traits that, you know, anyone could have. These are going to be like um, kind, friendly, those kind of traits. Um, temperament traits are going to be more so similar to the ones I just named. But they're, going to be, they're going to involve how we interact with the, um, the stimuli around us. So I'm more of a loner. That would be more of a... Um, temperament trait, more of a temperament um, would be um, I don't I don't like taking orders Some, something like that dynamic traits are going to be what embodies our goals so my dynamic, dynamic trait would be I want to help people I'm a helpful person so that would, that would be my goal to become a school counselor so that would be my dynamic trait then there's um, then there's ability traits. What abilities do I have that can help me find that um, reach that goal? I'm completion oriented. I'm I'm goal oriented. I'm success focused. Something similar to that, or that I that I. I'm a good and fast listener. That will be abilities, ability traits that would help us. So those are something that we could look forward to with any of Cattell's research. I'm going to want to. Um, so when you're going to think about Alport or Cattell, you're going to want to, you're going to start thinking or seeing similarities and also opposites. So you're definitely going to see a lot more similarities than you would with Alport and Freud with. Cattell and Alport. So Cattell definitely believed in um, categorical psychology. Alport definitely did not. Alport believed in now, present, and future. Um, there was more of a biological 
um, focused on Cattell's research than there was on Alport's, actually. And so that is definitely um, one of the things that you would definitely look for with any of research.